Welcome to another movie plot. It begins in 1897 with the ship the Demeter sailing from Russia to England. The crew's all been drained of their blood and their captain lashed to the helm, as they pull into port and the sole survivor Dracula departs. He goes unchecked until the events of every Dracula story when Van Helsing turns the vampire into ashes. But unlike the others the undead son of the dragon continues to resurrect. The hunter decided that the best thing was to seal Dracula inside a steel coffin beneath his feeding grounds of Carfax Abbey. And over a hundred years later the Abbey's now a museum of antiquities still run by the same Van Helsing. In using the vampire's blood that he extracts with leeches he's managed to find a way to stave off death, and changed his name to Matthew to throw off suspicion as being Abraham. Most people believe that the story was just a lie told by Bram Stoker and that the novel was fiction, including Matt's apprentice Simon who delivers him a 15th century crossbow for the collection. Matthew's assistant Selina finishes up for the day and turns down Simon's advances, before revealing that she's really in cahoots with a team of burglars who intend to rob the place under the leadership of Marcus. Disguised as a police officer a thief named Trick gains entry to the building and the five-man squad subdue the guards. They've come to steal from the museum's heavily protected vault, which requires Abe's handprint as retina scans and one of the thieves' nightshade to produce a recording of the owner's voice. Nobody knows what it contains but Selina promises Marcus that it must be valuable by the way the old man protects it. Despite finding what we know to be vampire skulls lining the walls, the ignoramuses continue underground until reaching the chamber all corridors converge on. They break in only to find a coffin sitting inside an empty cave and all begin arguing about what they should do. Marcus assumes that the cloak and dagger appearance is all just to scare them as no one would think to look for a treasure inside a coffin. Eddie protests about going any further but he's ordered to move the box by Marcus, activating a pressure plate and getting him impaled by silver spikes designed to stake Drake should he awake. When he backs up the second line of defense kills Dax whose only job was to freeze the lock, and the team brainstorm how they're going to escape coming up with the idea for Nightshade to blow a hole into the river. At the behest of Selina they're also made to take the coffin assuming that the valuables are hidden inside. Van Helsing hears the alarm go off and arms himself with an old flintlock and silver bullets, only to find the thieves already escaped with the coffin and left their dead. They transport the cargo on a plane to America and leave it up to Nightshade to gain access, but he's angry about leaving empty-handed and cuts himself out of frustration. The blood gives power to the slumbering vampire who's now able to influence the mortal with his misty excretion. He shows Nightshade the way inside where Dracula's body lays covered in leeches that keep him in a weakened state. After briefly getting a leech to the eyeball, the thief discovers what he came for in the form of a silver crucifix set with rubies, when Dracula rises and the mask comes off. The next of the thieves to be drained of their blood is Trick, who discovers Nightshade dead in Dracula's place and the vampire up walking about. Now with enough energy to regain his youth Dracula instantly tests out his powers of seduction on Selina, which obviously works causing Marcus to open fire on the bullet immune immortal. Their pilot Charlie struggles to fly with the sudden change of cabin pressure as they begin to enter a sinister storm. Dracula rips out Marcus's throat as we jump to a woman below them in New Orleans named Mary. She has recurring nightmares and suddenly has a vision of Dracula on board the plane, but believes it's just one of her dreams as he appears standing in her bedroom. He recognizes her scent, but Mary pulls away and the illusion's broken by the arrival of her roommate co-worker and best friend Lucy. Later on Mary confides in her priest father David about having the bad dreams, and thinks they have something to do with her recently deceased mother or her father she's never met. Back in England Simon comes into work and finds the place ransacked with Matthew preparing to travel. He begs his mentor to confide in him but Van Helsing doesn't reveal where he's going and jumps on a plane to America. When the hunter touches down in the States he's looking pale without his leeches, and sees a news report by Valerie on the untimely crash of a private plane. Charlie's corpse is lashed to the pilot's seat like the captain of the Demeter and Dracula's coffins alongside it. Abe travels to New Orleans to hunt down his old nemesis while unknowingly being followed by his nosy apprentice. At the sight of the crash Valerie's doing some after-hours coverage with her cameraman JT. He's unable to see Dracula attacking through the camera until he opens his other eye, and is killed while Val flees to her van but she's surrounded by JT's death on the monitors. The Count then claims her as his second bride alongside Selina who's bagged up with her accomplices at the town hall. Van Helsing goes to the hall with his silver stake launcher but discovers some of the body bags already empty. Simon confronts Abe and when he sees the doctor trying to drive a blade through Selina the fool stops him, unaware of what's going on and letting the vampire escape. Nightshade leaps out fangs first but Helsing puts him down without any debate from Simon on that one. He leaves the apprentice to watch the corpse and goes searching for Selina with his flintlock upstairs, but Simon takes his eyes off Nightshade and he returns as the stake missed his heart. Before the vampire kills him Simon uses the semi-automatic launcher to make sure that he hits the heart. 
With his first vampire killed Simon determines to slay the others, but Marcus rises an undead and Simon only manages to stab him in the eye with a crucifix knife before he escapes. Van Helsing's about to put down Selina but Trix attacks him from behind, getting the rookie vampire's head blown off by the hunter and Selina nailed to a wall when she goes at a student. Despite it all Simon's unable to just behead his co-worker and the two hunters flee before police arrive. Matthew lets him in on what's happening and the severity of the situation, that he's really Abraham Van Helsing and used Dracula's lack of reflection against him in the 1897 capture. Abe learned about the vampire's blood inadvertently when Crossfire gave him the initial injection, but his prolonged injections are the reason that Dracula now has a connection with his daughter. Unlike other vampires he cannot be destroyed by any conventional methods and is repulsed by God and all things Christian. Mary's currently at the church again with Father David while the town's Mardi Gras is kicking off outside. She tells him about the feeling she has of someone wanting to claim her soul, then when the priest appears to her as Dracula saying that it's all true she flees the church in terror. Meanwhile the vamp's physical form strolling around the town's Mardi Gras and gets startled by falling change. Bride number one's currently undergoing psych evaluation at the police station, when Drake arrives and the two vampires munch down on the doctor and officer. Dracula visits the music store that Mary works at and recognizes Lucy from disturbing his apparition. Mary isn't working today so Lucy takes Dracula home to wait for her there and invites the vampire inside. She mentions that Mary's mother was super religious and raised Mary to be God-fearing, before being easily seduced into bride number three status and having a levitating freak fest which Mary senses. She goes looking for Lucy at work and runs into Simon who's come there alone while Abe's gone to her house. He tells her that he's with her father but she doesn't want anything to do with him after he abandoned her mother. Mary's then not around to witness when Simon's attacked by a one-eyed Marcus disguised as a homeless man. He learns quickly that he can no longer touch silver before Simon stabs him with the silver blade and decapitates him. Meanwhile Van Helsing arrives at Mary's house, only this time to be the one betrayed by his reflection and captured by Dracula. The vampire blames Abe for stealing his blood and claims Mary as his own since it now runs through her veins. She gets a cryptic call from Lucy telling her that she's currently with Mary's father, then finds him dead upstairs with a pole driven through his neck. Lucy springs out a full-fledged vampiress and the whole house turns into a Dracula fever dream, with all three brides tormenting Mary until their master shows up to reclaim his blood. He turns into a wolf and chases her straight out of the house and into Simon's arms, who fires a stake through Dracula as he disperses into a swarm of bats. The two escape with Simon learning that Van Helsing's dead, and Mary that her mother refused to let her father see her after she discovered his addiction to the leeches. Needing hallowed ground they decide to hold up at Father David's church for the night in the hope it'll protect them. Simon says that Van Helsing saved him when he was in a dark place and feels it's his duty to protect Mary as repayment for this. While in the parish library they research Dracula's background hoping to find the weakness to actually destroy him. They can't find anything to explain the vampire's dislike of silver in any Christian literature, and Mary translates the Hebrew written in Van Helsing's blood to say believe in me for I am the way to eternity. Suddenly Dracula enters so Simon produces a Bible to allow Mary to escape into the cemetery. The vampire's unfazed by the presence of the book until its pages catch on fire at contact with his skin. He locates Mary before Simon can arrive and explains how he spent centuries searching for someone not bitten but born with his curse. He swipes her before Simon can rescue her and brings her to a nearby church roof overlooking the town. Using his bite to give Mary the curse and a glimpse into his origins, he reveals that he's Judas Iscariot and that he sold out Jesus to the Romans for 30 pieces of silver. In atonement Judas attempted to die for his sins like Jesus, but the rope that he used snapped so God decided to punish him. The traitor was given eternal life to walk the earth alone and a strong aversion to Christian artifacts and silver. He wished for death but now fights to stay alive and make the world in his image as a slight against God who created it in his own. Meanwhile Simon sees Selina feeding on Mardi Gras partygoers and follows her back to the church. The three brides are all there and attempt to seduce Simon into an easy kill, but he breaks a wooden cross apart and stakes Valerie in the heart. Simon's then captured as the first bride dies and the remaining two hold him prisoner for their master. Dracula wants Mary to feast on him as her first kill as a new vampire, but she only pretends to bite him and instead produces the blood from her own lip. She requests Simon's head as a trophy allowing her to unsheathe the silver knife. Then when Lucy notices the lack of puncture wounds Mary decapitates her best friend and impales Drake. Judas is no stranger to betrayal and beats Mary around the rooftop talking about how it's kind of his thing. Mary's newfound vampire powers keep her from being harmed but Simon has a rough time with his co-worker. He's thrown through a window but gets his hands on a pair of garden shears and prunes Selena's head right off. They're then caught by Dracula who throws them back at Simon giving Mary the opening to wrap a power cord around his neck, 
then throw herself from the roof in an attempt to finish the job he started 2000 years ago. He's unable to hold Mary and she falls to the ground but he's happy to see she survives, then releases her from his vampiric curse by just muttering the words. This time the lynch doesn't break and Judas actually dies in front of Jesus as the sun comes up and turns him to ashes. Sometime later Simon and Mary take over the museum together, and the new Van Helsing takes over her father's job of keeping Dracula's ashes sealed inside his coffin. And the movie ends.